today we decided to talk to you about the robotic radical prostatectomy in previous abdominal surgery and we are going to share with our experience about a two or two months back i had a patient who had a open cholecystectomy with her with hernia and he went around the town and most of the persons told him you go for a open radical prostatectomy then he came to me and at that time we decided to review our material uh, what is our experience in this area so as you all know now that uh, robotic radical prostatectomy has been well established as a standard treatment for localized prostate cancer previous abdominal surgery sometimes poses a challenge and the technical modifications and feasibility of robotic radical prostatectomy in patients with previous abdominal surgery has been evaluated in our experience and we reviewed the contemporary literature in the literature there are only four papers which have been published on this topic the common previous surgeries can be appendicectomy cholecystectomy colectomy exploratory laparotomy or laparoscopy inguinal hernioraphy hernioplasty pyelolithotomy cystolithotomy nephrectomy and we you can see in this particular patient this is a large midline scar otherwise we have seen patients with a scar all over the abdomen the commonly encountered difficulties in these cases is the approach in which way you should put your first port and which uh, approach then access and the port placement and then there may be omental and the bowel adhesions and there can be complications of when you are doing the adhesolysis there may be bowel injuries there may be prolonged paralytic ileus delayed bowel recovery bladder and adjacent organ injuries there is a increased duration of the surgery and there is a compromised functional and oncological outcomes and uh, one thing what we have come across is that there is a definitely increased duration of the surgery in these cases we have evaluated our 312 patients this has been done between me and dr rajiv yadav and we have kept a database of all these cases and there was previous surgery in 53 patient and however we uh, have encountered the adhesions in 70 patients the type of surgery hernioplasty was the most common in 25 cases cholecystectomy in 11 appendectomy in 8 nephrectomy in 2 pyelolithotomy 2 and others in 3 cases so to total there were 53 patients who had the surgery what we want to show here in this diagram is that uh, in this situation when the scar is there you have to avoid the area where you want to put the first port and uh, the safest area is the left upper quadrant usually this area is clean and there you can put your varis needle or you can put a 5 mm port and put a 5 mm laparoscopic uh, telescope to visualize the abdominal cavity and then you start deciding where you can put your next port and if required then we put the second port and the common one is this 8 mm on the left side and with these two ports you can do laparoscopic adhesolysis and here is the importance that the robotic surgeon should also have experience of the laparoscopy because sometime you can encounter this procedure and after cleaning uh, the abdominal wall then you take a decision for placement of the further uh, ports and i like to show you one of these cases there is a dense omental adhesions and then we did the first the laparoscopic adhesolysis was done and after the cleaning then you see the abdominal cavity like this and after that you can put your ports in the places where you want to put your standard six port uh, placement can be done in these uh, cases the results we did diagnostic laparoscopy in all 53 cases adhesolysis was required laparoscopically in 47 cases and in robotically in 23 in lower abdomen if there is only adhesions then one can do the adhesolysis with the robotic only the mean laparoscopic time was 33 minutes extending from 14 to 42 minutes and uh, now this is important because when you are counseling the patient you have to tell them that uh, because of the adhesions the prolongation of the surgical time and the complications may also become higher the mean robotic console time was 171 minutes mean total operating time was 253 minutes and conversion to open was nil the mean blood loss the transfusion the major complications were nil only minor complications there was a paralytic ileus in 23 cases this patients may require some more time for the recovery and it can go up to sometime 3 or 4 days also and mean hospital stay was 4 days so because of this recovery of the time their hospital stay has also increased 
and mu duration of the castorization was seven days when the castor was removed in these cases. So the robotic radical prostatectomy with previous abdominal surgery, it is feasible. The approach, it can be extraperitoneal or it can be transperitoneal because of our experience of the transperitoneal. We have done all our cases transperitoneally. Diagnostic laparoscopy is a good thing which should be done. And if it is not possible, then one should do a mini laparotomy, do a adhesiolysis, and then you can go back and do the uh, surgery or laparoscopic or robotic adhesiolysis is required in these cases. And these are some of the publications in the literature. With this, I'd like to conclude that a robotic radical prostatectomy is feasible in <coughs> patients with previous abdominal or inguinal surgery with comparable outcomes. Laparoscopic approach to adhesiolysis maintains minimally invasive advantages of the robotic radical prostatectomy. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.